Now you have a spiritual nature that is stronger than your fleshly nature. The problem is that fleshly nature is still strong, isn't it? Amen? Doesn't your body still have its wants and desires and hurts and its own agenda? And I want to give you an illustration. You're going to 1 Thessalonians 5. And Brother Chad, come on over here if you would, sir. If you could stand here for me. If you would stand over here for me, sir. If you'll hold that for me. If you'll hold that for me. Let's read this verse. 1 Thessalonians 5. Look at verse number 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That means completely. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice what he says here. We've got a spirit and a soul, but then we also have a body. The flesh. This is the old man. And this is the new man. I'm sorry, that's not politically correct. This is the young man and the old man. Is that better? I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the new man. I want to use these guys as an illustration, right? Let's say they're one. Now, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 is a very foundational verse. It's very important in Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image. There is the son that came down in a body. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. He represents our body. The Holy Spirit represents the spirit. The soul represents the eternal father in heaven who said, my soul is well pleased with his son, right? So we are a three part being when we get born again we get a fourth part we get the holy spirit that moves inside of you and he will indwell you forever there are scriptures that tell us that we are sealed unto the day of redemption we're sealed by the holy spirit of promise that's this guy sorry he is sealed he's preserved he's protected he's going to heaven no matter what now does the body ever go to heaven if i murder the body does it change the destination of the soul if, the, if, if he murders himself and kills his body, does it change his eternal destination? No. Suicide is not an unforgivable sin. There's actually two men in the Bible that committed suicide and went to heaven. But don't do it, God forbid, okay? Once you're saved, you're always saved. That's one of the blessings that God gives us. I want you to understand this illustration because we have the old man, that's the flesh, the body, we have the new man, that's the spiritual man, that's our eternal soul, and we're born again for a purpose to begin to grow. Many Christians are hanging out with this guy instead of this guy, and it affects our walk and our talk and everything about our life. Uh, remember, we read it just a minute ago in Romans where it says that our old man is crucified with him. You know, he says that we should put on the Lord Jesus Christ every day and make not provision for the flesh. That means walk in the spirit. And then Paul said, hey, man, I have to die daily. I've got to kill this body every day because the flesh wants to do its own thing. It's contrary to the spirit, he tells us. The old man, the new man, the fleshly body, the born-again spiritual person. Let me read you a few verses on sanctification because there's two types of sanctification. Listen to this. When you're saved, you are set apart, you are sanctified and made holy in the spirit, in the soul. You cannot sin in the soul because Jesus paid for all of your sin. But the old man needs to sanctify himself Every single day, and unfortunately, it's not a daily thing. It's a moment-by-moment -moment thing. Man, you can be walking real good and be like, what was that? I got distracted. And like, hey, buddy, back over here, right? I mean, the flesh gets distracted. Well, shiny, right? We get distracted real easy. And what I want you to understand is two things. Number one, as it says in Acts chapter 17, verse 31, that we have assurance of salvation. And then the other side is we have a duty to work on cleaning up our life. That's the sermon in a nutshell. You're free forever, but you're also free from sin, which means now you have the power to walk in the Spirit. So check this out. 2 Thessalonians 2, he says, salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of truth. How'd you get saved? By belief. What happened? The Holy Spirit. I'm sanctified by the Holy Spirit moved in, sealed me into the day of rede redemption, it says in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. So you're sealed, protected, preserved. 1 Peter 1, it says, through sanctification of the Spirit. That's capital S Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit moves in and sanctifies you, makes you holy. 
The, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us in the spirit and the soul at the moment we believe through the blood of Jesus Christ. He paid for it. In Acts 26, it says that we receive forgiveness of sins and are sanctified by faith. It's not by being a good person. It's by trusting in Jesus. Romans 15, 16, it says we are sanctified by the Holy Ghost. It's because He moves in, makes us a new person. Now we're no longer three, now we're four. The Holy Spirit's on our side, right? 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2, it says, and are sanctified in Christ Jesus. We're in Christ. We're sanctified. Hebrews 10, 10, by which will we are sanctified, listen to this, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Jesus only had to die one time. And he paid for it all. By faith you took the gift. You're sanctified once and for all. It's done. It's finished. But that's not the end of the story when it comes to discipleship. Go to Colossians chapter 3. We need to grow. We are commanded to grow. Remember he says, knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him. We need to put our old man to death. <laughs> that body of sin, he called it in Romans chapter 6. We need to fight that good fight. And he says, and not serve sin. That's God's will for your life, is that you would walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Colossians chapter 3, when you get there. Look at verse number 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. The goal is, is that he would be conformed to the image of the Son, that he would begin to look like Jesus Christ more and more, that his inner man, the new man, would begin to grow through the power of the Word. The more he learns about Jesus, the more he can be like him. And he, has, he is free from sin. The new man cannot sin. He's free from sin. This is called the body of sin. It can only sin. This body is not capable of earning eternal rewards because it can't earn salvation. So what we need to do is let this guy control this guy. I've heard preachers use the illustration, you've got a white dog and an, and an ugly dog, okay? And if you feed one dog more than the other one, then that one's going to win the battle, right? You feed the ugly guy, he's going to beat up the other one. You follow me? And they use that illustration, white dog, black dog, just trying to get people to Imagine the sin versus the good, right? If you will, go to Romans 7. The goal is that he, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can begin to help this guy look more like Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, he said, to make himself of twain one new man. Ephesians 4, he says that he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So the goal is that uh, the old man that wants to do the old stuff, that he would cease and reduce, and that the spiritual man would grow. What would, what would growth look like if you started growing spiritually? Show me what a spiritual man would do. There you go. Yeah, read your Bible. Amen. You can drop your, your, your tag. We know who you are. We know who you're not. Right? So now he's growing. Romans chapter 7. Look at verse number 18 with me. Look at Romans 7, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh. Oh, that's this guy. Hold on, now look. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me. He says, I have a desire. I can control my will. It's with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. He's talking about this internal struggle where your spirit is leading you and you want to do the right thing. You want to think the right thing. You want to say the right thing. You want to have a humble, godly attitude and the flesh gets in there. And man, you just want to do it your way. There's a war inside of you. It's the new man versus the old man. Now, if a Christian lets the old man win, he may just sin a sin unto death and die early. God forbid. Look at verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Don't you love reading the Bible? Doesn't, doesn't it, isn't it delightful to see God's words and you can comprehend it yourself? And the Spirit bears witness with you through His word. Isn't that awesome? 
Verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring, warring. Okay, so start warring against him as he's trying to grow, if you would. I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. So now his old man is trying to interrupt the new man. He's trying to distract him and keep him from growing. In fact, he goes on, not only is there a war, but he says, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. Go ahead and, go ahead and bring him into captivity if you would. Bring him into captivity. Hey, we could be doing a lot of funner things. We could be doing a lot of other things right now. You know, this is a lot of hard work. Thought about that? Why don't we go back to what we were doing before? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and bring him into captivity. So. <laughs> He's like, now there's a war. There's a war in his members. The old man versus the new man. And boy, he's fighting. Boy, justice is putting up a fight. But you know, sometimes the flesh wins. Put him in captivity. I mean, get him. <laughs> Hold it. Why don't you go ahead and kidnap him? You know what? I don't want to give up control. <laughs> this has gone too far. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, man, all right. <laughs> now that's a spiritual man right there. You know, the body says, the, the Bible says, I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection. There's a war. The flesh wants to win, but the spiritual man says, I'm going to keep under my body and bring it into subjection. I'm not going to give in to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I'm going to fight the good fight and take a stand. Thank you, guys. You can have a seat. I hope that illustration just kind of drives it home for you that inside of you there's two types of sanctification. There's the work that Jesus did. It's perfect. It's complete. It's done. You're going to heaven because of him. But the old man needs to be sanctified every day. And you got to work on getting your body under control. If not, your body will take captive the spiritual man and choke him out and grieve the Holy Spirit and he'll ruin your life if he can. Isn't that what the sinful flesh would do unchecked? What a warning to Christians here. Listen to me, Christian. Thank God we're saved by faith and it's finished. But fight that old man every day. Every time that sin rears its ugly head and tries to take you away from growing in the spirit, you fight that body of sin. You don't put up with it. You stand your ground. You've been given the Holy Spirit to overcome that sort of temptation. God is with you. Everything is possible in Jesus' name. Look, he says, read it again with me, verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I'll tell you who, Jesus Christ. Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, if you would. He says in his mind he knows the right thing to do and he struggles to do the right thing. Why? Because the body of sin is present. The body is going against the mind. It's going against the spirit. In 1 John 3 he says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. When you're born again in the spirit, that spirit cannot commit sin. There's no sin you can do that Jesus didn't already pay for. It says, For his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Once you're born again, you cannot sin. A Christian cannot sin in the spiritual man. But that body of sin can't do anything but sin. And you have to fight that every day. Lest he destroy you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, if you will, look at verse number 3. For this is the will of God even your 
sanctification. This is what we're talking about. How do I set myself apart for a holy reason? God's will is your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication. He says sanctify that old man every day. He needs work. That every one of you, verse 4, should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Can you, can you fathom what we're talking about here a minute? When we talk about somebody's possessed, a spirit took over their body. That's what we mean. Here he's saying, let the Holy Spirit take over your body. Let the new man take control of the old man and bring that body into subjection lest you become a castaway. The warning is real. He's saying, man, you better walk in the Spirit, otherwise you're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that path leads to death, disease. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. That we should possess our vessel in sanctification and honor. You need to use your mind and the Holy Spirit, the conscience and the Holy Spirit that God has given you to discipline your body. That's what God's saying. The Holy Spirit has greater power than your body, but in your mind, if you choose to let the body win, the Holy Spirit's not going to force you to do anything. He's there as your helper and comforter and guide to lead you and guide you into the truth. But if you reject the truth, that's on you. 